When you have a party, hope you are hiding. I'm gonna go in the shade. This jacket is too hot to be out in the sun. Oh, thank you. Oh, hey, Andy, how you doing? Hey, it's great to see you. Is anybody else here that we know? Um, I think you met Lisa. Oh yeah, she's the one that uh, organized the last protest, right? The one that had the big American flag? The one we went to, I think. Yeah, the last one I was at. Man, this jacket is super hot. I'm going to have to take it off. <laughs> Welcome to Albert's Adventures Part 3, Episode 6. In this episode, I'll be showing some footage that I got at the rally last Sunday. This rally here in Charlotte, North Carolina, was for the medical professionals that are being threatened with the loss of their jobs if they don't get the COVID vaccine. And uh, one thing that I found particularly interesting about this is that uh, medical professionals turn out to be one of the biggest demographic groups of people refusing the vaccine. And why is that? You would think that doctors and nurses and people that work in hospitals would be the first to line up and roll up their sleeves after all if covid is really a deadly dangerous disease that's going to kill us all then and they're there in the hospital being exposed to it by patients wouldn't they want to have protection what's going on why are these crazy doctors and nurses refusing the vaccine could it be that it's because they understand how vaccines work and because they recognize that this injection that we're being offered and coerced into taking is not actually a vaccine at all. And could it be that they recognize how reckless and how dangerous this experiment is that's being performed on the population of the world? It's an interesting question and one that bears thinking about. Why is it exactly that doctors and nurses are refusing the vaccine? In this next segment, I'm going to show a little bit of the rally and uh, some of the signs and the people there. And then in the last segment, I'm going to show my interview with one of the people that I met there. I hope you enjoy it. Is it okay if I film you for a minute? Is it okay if I film you for a minute? Oh, yeah, of course, of course. This is my friend Albert. Hi, Albert. What was Hi. Name? Lydia, Albert, Albert, Lydia. Hi, Lydia. Nice to meet you. The motivation is clearly uh, self-serving and yeah, demonstrates just, uh, a desperate attempt by incompetent officials to dodge uh, culpability for mishandling this pandemic. The, the media is complicit in driving a false narrative of fear and control, and we reject and condemn it. The public pressure on organizations and individuals to conform has positioned our, na our nation to blindly follow ever-changing demands that are nonsensical and harmful. Shame on anyone who echoes the call for this socialistic group thinking compliance 
it is embarrassing to our great legacy of freedom. The last line that I had written there, we left off before we sent it to the news, but it was George Washington would slap your face. <laughs> but that's a statement we put out because we're with you guys. We, we believe in your stance for freedom. And I just want to share a few quick thoughts with you today. Um, one from God's Word, and this is First, first Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. It says, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. And I just want to share quick, three quick thoughts. Number one, thankfulness produces stewardship. Right now, a big theme in our nation is that if you're proud of our country, that you're a nationalist, that you're bad, that you're xenophobic. And you know what? These people that want to run America down and tell us that America's no good, America's racist, America's evil, America's bad, don't let them look down on you for your patriotism. Nationalism is if you think you're better than someone else because of where you were born. And that's not right. But patriotism is being faithful. Thankful to God for the country that you were born in. And God wants us to be thankful. That's a godly characteristic. We are supposed to be thankful. There's nothing wrong with that. And there's nothing wrong with being proud of your country. And when you're proud of your country and when you're thankful... That requires you to be a steward. And, and a steward is just a biblical term. It means a manager. It means to take care of something. And I want to encourage you today that, you know what? Freedom this country is an experiment in democracy. It's an experiment in freedom. Hey, it's good to see you again. And I want to encourage you. You know what? If you want to keep that, you've got to fight for it. You've got to stand up. You've got to march. You've got to say something. You've got to say something. It's not enough just to set the world in free. It's not enough just to enjoy and be thankful for our freedom. But that thankfulness requires us to stand up and to push back. The other thing I want to mention today is just a little bit about this current situation. There's a great book written by a guy named Andy Andrews, and it's called How Do You Murder 11 Million People? He talked about Hitler and how Hitler was able to accomplish all the terrible atrocities that he was able to. We all know about it. But the way he was able to do that was he lied. He lied to the people and he claimed power under an emergency act to suspend fundamental liberties. We all know how that worked out, don't we? Now, I'm not a, I'm not a scientist. I don't, I don't understand everything about vaccines. I'm not a politician. I don't understand everything about government. But I know one thing. I know we're being lied to. Yeah. And when you're lied to, and when you know you're being lied to,
Hey, how's it going? What are y'all representing? I can see you're some kind of like group or something, but I can't tell what. Oh, y'all are the Proud Boys? Right on. Were y'all up at the uh, Capitol protest? Is there anybody here as part of your group that would be willing to do a brief interview for independent media? Uh, I just no. have a YouTube channel that I would put it up on. I'd like to, but we don't talk to media, unfortunately. Not even independent media? No, sir. No, 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 we just don't. Sorry, I apologize. Not trying to be assholes, but yeah. You know, it's just, it's just a thing we don't do. Oh, okay. Can I ask you about Enrique Terrio? How do you feel about finding out that he's an, an FBI informant? That's the same thing as talking to me. Same thing. I'm not. I'm not. In so you're not willing to make any comment about anything? I apologize for that. And is there anybody here that would be in your, part of your group? Uh, we'll talk. We'll talk, and we'll let you know. Oh, okay. Thank you. Interviewing Pete. He, he's here to uh, at the protest uh, here at. Uh, what park is this? Marshall Park? Yep. Marshall Park in downtown Charlotte. Uh, Pete, can you tell me a little bit about why you're here? I'm here for everyone to have their own rights to choose and not choose whether they're mandated to take this vaccine. And would you consider yourself an anti-vaxxer? No, I would not. What, what is your objection to this particular vaccine? My objection is to the mandate that the large hospital systems and so many other institutions in this country are trying to force upon their employees. Do you, do you have, do you feel like you have a reason to be uh, concerned about the you know, side effects or, or what might happen after you take the vaccine? I think there's definitely concerns. Um, my biggest concern is just going along and following the sheep that are being told that there is no problems with this, uh, that we're waiting to seek FDA approval. Because if we just go along and do that, the next thing, you, and I know, is we're going to be requiring to have our children get vaccinated before they go to school. There's been no long-term trials. This stuff's been rushed through. Is it good? I'm not sure yet. I'm not sure. I'm not willing to say yes or no. I'm just not sure, and I'm not willing to put that into my body more importantly, not put it in the body of my children. That'll be next. So so one of your major concerns is that it sets a precedent that if they go this step, then they'll continue with other steps that are even more uh, intrusive into your freedom and your health? I agree, yes. And I'm not anti-vax, as you asked me earlier. I'm anti-being told, especially by the government and large institutions. Uh, it's very unpatriotic as a veteran. Uh, as someone who loves this country and a healthcare worker as well, I feel like we should all make our own choices and we shouldn't be led into a situation where we're being bullied into it or told what we have to do with possibly losing our jobs and our um, livelihoods, especially when we were the ones that have been there through the whole pandemic uh, without this vaccine and um, doing a damn good job. So you're a, a hospital employee, or a, you work in the medical industry? I work in the medical field. And you're in danger of losing your job if you don't take the vaccine? That's what the mandates say. How do you feel about the, uh, the fact that they're trying to make people get vaccinated that have already had COVID? Does that make any sense to you at all? Uh, I don't understand if you've uh, actually had uh, antibodies, why you'd be required to, uh, to get another vaccine on top of that when it might not even give you as good an immunity as the actual disease does. Um, how do you feel about the Proud Boys being here? Do you think that's a good thing or a bad thing? I didn't notice them. Oh, they're, they're over there in the black shirts with I the yellow. I about them. Oh, okay. Well, thank you for taking the time to talk to me. I, I appreciate it. Pleasure.